Beauty and Brains presents a work in progress. Your favorite weekly podcast all about navigating adulthood and adversity with transparency and vulnerability. Here, we highlight progress over perfection. You're listening to my personal professional development diary, where I share the highs and lows and the real and raw parts of the story that no one talks about. I'm your host, Breland Hunt, a work in progress. Dear friend, I hope that you are well and that you are as healthy in body as you are sound in mind and strong in spirit. Welcome back to the podcast, episode two, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Um, As you guys can tell by the title of this episode, today we're going to be talking about my social media sabbatical, why I took it and what I learned. Um, I just, listen, there's so much that I have to catch you guys up on, but each episode can't be two hours long. Okay. So first let me share this week's brain free. So I didn't get to share this last episode or the first episode because it was so long. I had to cut something out. Can you believe that it was actually longer than what it was? But, um, it's my podcast. So I do what I want. And beyond documenting my personal and professional development, I want to discuss my thoughts on breaking news and media and pop culture. So you want to know what gave me a brain freeze this week? Simone Biles. Simone! (laughs) Simone Biles! Listen, I love her. And it's actually really crazy because when I was prepping for my Miss Marilyn interview, I got asked about her a lot or sometimes I would just bring her up because I love Simone Biles. I mean, in general, the Olympics just inspire me so much. And actually, the brain freeze that I did the previous episode that I cut out, I was talking about the Olympus as well, because again, it just inspires me like I wish I was so good at a sport that I could be in the Olympics like that just seems like such a great something to achieve and to work towards. I mean, I guess it's never too late. But comment down below if you guys are watching here on YouTube. Shout out to all the audio listeners. (laughs) I still got to act kind of crazy because I know I'm still very new to this. But if you are watching on YouTube, shout out to the home gang, comment down below if you could compete in anything in the Olympics, what would you compete in and why? Anyway, so her actions this past week, they shocked me. I was shocked. And I was confused. And I was just like, can she do this? Wait, what's happening? Wait, why is she doing this? I was so confused. And I was really I had a really honestly horrible week. So I wasn't paying that much attention to anything. But obviously, that was a very big part of what was going on on social media this week. And I think it's even more proof about how social media can just be this huge, heavy, looming thing. Because imagine, I mean, this girl is literally our champion. And we champion her. We I mean, we we love her rightfully so like she deserves our love but can you imagine like the pressure that she felt when she knew like I'm actually about to drop out (laughs) like I'm actually not feeling it and I'm not saying it like in a joking way I'm joking now but like I'm sure for her she was probably so anxious she was probably dealing with so much anxiety and just like I want to do this but I don't want to do it I don't want to let my team down I want my family down I want to let the country down like all that pressure and I know one of her thoughts was were they're gonna go up on social media like when I post this post or when I talk to this news person or when they release the statement however she did it she was like they're probably gonna drag me on social media like she I know she was as scared to check her dms like okay if y'all don't know what I'm talking about Simone Biles pulled out of the gymnastics team's finals in Tokyo this week Um, A decision that she said left her feeling super frustrated. Biles says that she was physically fine, but decided to withdraw due to mental health reasons. She says, and I quote, I have to put my pride aside. I have to do what's right for me and focus on my mental health and not jeopardize my health and my well-being. That's why I decided to take a step back. So Biles' decision was huge for many reasons. Top athletes don't just drop out, especially if they're not physically hurt, especially at the Olympics. Like 
that is huge. And then to be a black woman on top of that, black women are socialized to accept and internalize the strong black woman trope. And I think this is important because as much as I admire her, this experience made me respect her on a whole different level because what we're going to be talking about today in part is about social media and the strong black woman trope, which I hate. Okay, I hate it so much. And so this was the perfect brain freeze for this episode, because I'm going to walk you all through my existential crisis <laughs> that also including me making a decision to reject the black woman trope on my own life. And I actually think that it's interesting, because when we're going to get into this a little bit later, but just a little bit of a preview. I changed my social media handle from at Breland Barbie. I mean, I've been at Breland Barbie since most of you all have known me. I believe I changed that to be my at name before I started my senior year of high school. So before I even entered college, I've been Breland Barbie. And you guys probably all know the story about like the Barbie and how that name was like kind of used to, to bully me. Um, and oh, I just came up with a great idea a few days ago talking about like bullies as adults, like bullies during adulthood. And that's a great example of it, even though high school is not adulthood. And it's kind of like, you can definitely still be bullied as an adult. But I think that the bullying that I experienced, this is way off topic, but it's very different from like normal bullying, but it's still bullying nonetheless. And I would love to talk about my experience with that, especially because it still goes on to this day. Anyway, so I changed my at name. Most of you guys have known me um, for Breland Barbie for a long time. And it was kind of like, you know, it was a, it was a brand. It was a lot of different things. And I really like stepped into that Breland Barbie. But because Barbie was always used as kind of like a, a hateful term that I kind of used and I took power back to it. And I and I loved Breland Barbie, um, but she had to go. Anyway, I say that to say that when I originally knew that I was going to change the at name, and I figured this out during my existential crisis that we'll get into, the caption that I originally wrote for it, I didn't end up using, but I think it fits in good here. The original caption was, taking off the cape of the superwoman looks different for every black woman. For me, it's taking a step out of the Barbie box because trying to live up to a stereotype is literally impossible and fatiguing. And that makes me so sad kind of reading that back because I probably wrote that caption in February, knowing that I was going to do something along the lines of changing my at name from Breland Barbie to Breland Hunt and kind of like stepping out of the Barbie box was like the theme of the picture that I ended up using. And so I didn't end up using it just because at the time it just didn't seem like anybody cared about the change in the at name more so just I don't know, it just it didn't seem to fit. But the caption still stands. So I'm going to just go ahead and get right into it and talk about everything. Um, this would normally be the moment where I would do um, my advice question. So if you guys want to share your story with me, you can visit a work in progress on um, that page on my website, breelandhunt.com under the beauty and brains tab to submit your story. If you want any advice that my life experience will allot to your situation, but today we're just going to jump right into it. So why all of this change, right? A lot of you all, I mean, I'm like 70% through my rebrand, but for the most part, you guys get the gist. We started a podcast. Um, my YouTube name has changed. My Instagram name has changed. The content that I've been posting on my Instagram and you will soon see on my YouTube has completely changed. Where did this all come from? I told you all before that I didn't jump off of social media, especially Instagram, because of my MCAT. It ended up being a great benefit to it. And I stayed off because of my MCAT. But I I actually knew going into the new year that I wasn't going to be at least on Instagram. I said until June, I told myself I was like, I just need a break because Instagram is pissing me off. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing over there. I don't know what I want to do. I'm just confused. I'm, I'm unhappy with the way my stuff is performing. So just kind of taking a step back into giving you all a full understanding of my what I believed my purpose was on social media and what I believe it is now. Um, Let's rewind back to probably around June of 2020. So at this point, I have graduated my master's program, but I'm still living in North Carolina. And so there's no more graduate school vlogs, there's no more college vlogs. And I'm like, what the heck I'm about to do now. (laughs) Mind you guys, when I first started my YouTube channel, I specifically wanted to do college vlogs. I wanted to do, actually, I wanted to do everything. 
I saw like there were different YouTubers who were my favorite YouTubers and I kind of like took a little bit from everybody's channel that I liked and I wanted to create like my own channel where it was the thing that I like about everybody's channel but it was me and one of the people's channels who I really like and I don't liked and I don't know if I've ever really said this like on camera or on mic before but Jayla Corian was that girl like when I was specifically like a junior senior in high school is when I really got obsessed with YouTube I found out about YouTube because I was I mean it's really so crazy how everything comes back full circle that's another story the point is that I was really obsessed with Jayla Corian obsessed that's excessive I watched her videos and I didn't like all of them but she was one of the very few you know popular black girls who were on social media and I watched YouTube like it was television and I watched a lot of other people too but the thing that made her experience unique was that she did college vlogs and she was one of the first people to do it now she didn't do it consistently let's get this straight she maybe uploaded like two a semester and she was only at an HBCU for I feel like was it one year or two she maybe uploaded like four college vlogs before she ended up going to New York and then like she would vlog there but it wasn't necessarily like college life and like FITM is very different than an HBCU so it wasn't quite the same but the point is that I got the gist of it and my experience with HBCUs I would go and visit my sister not a lot, but um, my sister originally, before she transferred to NC State University, she actually went to an HBCU. She went to Bethune Cookman. And so I would visit her, like the whole family would go visit her because she was the first person in the family to go to college. She was all the way in Florida. So, like for Thanksgiving, obviously that's a really long trip for like a three day um, break. So, we all visited her for her first Thanksgiving in college. That was so nice. I wish somebody would have done that for me. But anyway, um, we visited her and I got the gist of like what it was like to, you know, not go to an HBCU, but I understood HBCUs at that age. My sister and I are six years apart. I had a gist of what college was like when I went to go visit my sister every now and then. And then I would kind of see a version of that um, for Jayla's videos. And I was like, I cannot wait. Like y'all, I was so excited um, to start my own YouTube channel. And then also to have this college life experience that I watched so many other people live before me. And so she was the only person who was doing videos like that like there were white girls who did videos and they wouldn't even be college vlogs but a lot of like prep for like college and like college advice videos which I loved and I enjoyed and I ate it all up um so I would watch those kind of videos and then of course I would watch like the normal beauty gurus and I was always into fashion so I'd watch fashion videos and then like I liked Jayla's because she had that college vlog aspect at HBCUs and I was like ain't nobody else doing this so I started off my channel and I'm doing college vlogs and it goes well and <laughs> like I immediately found success with it and I kind of coined myself unknowingly to be like a Spelman college vlogger and you know it's really sad you guys maybe it's just sad to me maybe I'm overthinking it but like <laughs> um as I'm posting on TikTok now if you're not following me follow me on TikTok at Breland Hunt um people will comment and be like oh aren't you that Spelman College girl I used to love watching your videos on YouTube and I'll be like oh, oh my god <laughs> like am I that old like I feel like I'm so I understand in some senses I'm an OG but because I haven't received the amount of success that I would hope to on social media it kind of hurts my feelings to see that people consider me to be like something old or past of like something of their past something washed up I'd be like dang you used to watch me and you could just consider me that Spellman girl but I have to understand that that's like the box that I put myself in and I didn't do it on purpose and the thing is like I saw it kind of happening I didn't know to what extent I don't I think I will never fully know now I'm getting more of an understanding when people comment that on my TikTok but I get the understanding of like, mm, people are kind of only watching my stuff for Spellman, but like, I'm only going to be here for a couple more years. I want people to watch it for me. And it got upsetting because I wanted to do hair videos and makeup videos and lifestyle stuff. And people were just obsessed with college content. And even like the advice videos, I really enjoyed, but I, I was like, I want to do more than that. If you guys are familiar with my channel, I'm, I'm going to do a video when I reach 50k about my experience kind of going from zero to 50k and so I don't want to like spoil it all here but let's just say that I've rebranded a few times and so I rebranded while I was at Spelman to be less all about Spelman and more about 
Breland, this girl who goes to college and the college happens to be Spellman. And then I think that I did pretty well because my views didn't drop significantly. If anything, they went up when I went to graduate school. But now when it was time for me to graduate graduate school, I was like, ooh, there's no more college vlogs. And it's very hard to vlog when your life is not interesting and I remember people telling me that all the time like I want to do this but I have nothing I would just be like just pick up a camera and do it and then I realized oof it's not that easy it's not that easy when you don't live in a place that has events going on or even like your home life isn't super you know nice to record in if you are around friends or family who don't like to be on camera and I was like I am kind of getting stuck so before I got stuck I decided to start like a a new segment on my channel called Breland's Life. And I was like, this is definitely going to be my claim to fame. No, I didn't think it was gonna be my claim to fame. I just thought that this was going to be a good reasonable shift between it's going to be very similar to my college vlogs where I show people the ins and outs of my day and my life. But instead of there being, you know, a whole bunch of school in between, it's just going to be whatever in my life is going on. It was like a college, it was like a summer vlog, but all lifelong so work would be included into it and things like that and before that I actually found a good amount of success doing my road to medicine vlogs or videos or series and I did enjoy those and I felt like they were helpful um it just gets difficult with the road to medical school videos because um I'm kind of creating the content as I'm living it and sometimes I don't necessarily feel like an expert talking about things that I'm currently going through. Trying to do this whole Breland's life thing and being active on my social media and as the months go on and at first the Breland's life videos were doing pretty okay like again the views didn't really dip I didn't notice like wow everybody clearly hates me (laughs) like it was like my stuff was doing okay my stuff was doing okay Instagram was doing fine and then when it got to like October ish everything was kind of just like meh. like I was really it was it's really easy to find content ishly when you're vlogging your life because it's kind of just like what's going on this week okay I'll vlog that I'll make that a, a, a video it's very easy to stay consistent um, I was making time it was really difficult balancing it with my MCAT stuff but I was making time to you know do picture ventures and create content and stuff for Instagram but I just wasn't feeling it I was just kind of like what is the purpose of all of this like why am I doing all of this because when I personally like I said I've been doing this for a long time and I understand that like I have a great support system hey guys how y'all doing you know we've been talking for a while oh let me put my daggone thing on do not disturb oh newbie move um, but I I've been talking to you guys but I haven't like really said what's up how y'all doing I hope you guys are doing well um hope you guys are enjoying the podcast so far okay <laughs> so yeah I I was like I feel like I've been doing this for a long time and for the amount of effort and work and thought and talent that I put into this I just low-key am not doing that well like I'm doing better than some people like some people don't get a thousand views at all some people don't get a thousand subscribers at all some people don't get a thousand dollars as a YouTube check at at all and I've experienced all those things and plus more but it's not as great you know as I wish I as I wish it was and so I kind of got into this moment where I was like I need to regroup because I either need to rebrand to where I'm actually producing content that's reaching people that people like that people are gonna watch subscribe follow or I need to do something where I'm actually happy with the content that I'm creating and I don't care about the numbers and things because this in between where I'm chasing numbers is getting really exhausting and it's getting I'm 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 not happy I felt myself being really, really, really unhappy. And it what sucks is when you're working hard. I felt like I was working so hard, but that I wasn't happy and that that was an indication that I wasn't walking in my purpose. Mentally, I was so wrapped up in everything that I wasn't. I wasn't in medical school. I wasn't successfully studying for medical school. I wasn't successfully creating inspiring and life-changing content. I wasn't reaching my full potential as an influencer and I wasn't 
growing in numbers. And physically, I wasn't where I want to be. This is a whole nother story. We all know I wasn't supposed to be here. (laughs) I wasn't supposed to be here in this house. But I am. And I'm grateful for it. But like, it's very different when I expected, okay, at least I'm going to be doing like this young adult content where I'm in my first home for the first time and decorating. But when it's like, okay, here you are decorating your childhood bedroom, like that's not that wasn't a part of the plan. So my post lacked purpose. And I began to get frustrated on like, why did I even care? Like that was a big thing in my mind where I was like, social media is actually really stupid. I was like, why do I even care about making my life be so interesting that it's good enough for a camera? Because if I didn't have a camera in my face, then it would be okay. Like I would be okay with living at home if I didn't have to make it sexy for the gram, you know, or if I didn't have to make content out of it. I would be okay with, you know, everything that I was experiencing. Okay, I would be okay but I wouldn't still be ecstatic. But I was like, I hate it where I was. I was very unhappy. So I had to take a step back and think about, you know, why I wasn't happy. And in the middle of that, like choose to give it to God, because I was like, I just need something new. I need something new. I need a reset. So like I said, um, at this point, this is in between like, September to October, November, and by the time we get to December, I'm like, cool I'm gonna take like a six month break from at least social media I I mean when's the last time y'all seen me tweet like I literally just retweet something if somebody messages me on there but I didn't even put Twitter back on my phone when I deleted all my apps so Twitter is null and void from now on as far as we concern I don't have Twitter um but Instagram I was like I'm just gonna take a break and it started off with me actually doing prayer and fasting for the first 21st days the year before that this is my second year doing the 21 days of prayer and fasting and for some reason I can't remember if I gave up all of social media or if it was just YouTube I can't remember but this time I was like it's all of social media all of YouTube and at this point I'm also right around the time where all this stuff with MCAT is going on. So I'm like, also no Netflix, also no Hulu. If I'm watching YouTube, I'm watching a sermon. If I'm listening to a podcast, it needs to be a sermon. <laughs> Otherwise, it's it's me and God and MCAT and that's it. <laughs> so at this point, I'm like, I know what I need. I need to choose my purpose over my potential. And I need to give this to God because when I really thought about it, everything worked out so well relatively that I never had a chance to give my channel and my artwork and my influencing and my create this creative side of me I never had a chance to give it to God like I've been giving my academics you know my MCAT I've been every step of the way he walks with me but when it comes to this influencing thing like that's nothing but God like everybody was trying to hop on the bandwagon and create content and become the next Spellman college vlogger and it was like God chose me sheesh that's a flex that's a flex because like how was I supposed to know I showed up at the right time at the right place doing the right thing and when people ask me like I think that if I would start my channel now I probably would not be that successful I only am where I am because God granted me this he gave me this he literally was like you're gonna use this and it never dawned on me that maybe he's giving this to me for a reason. And it's probably not to be popular. It's probably not to have a fat check. You know, it's probably to touch somebody's life or somebody's life. Um, And I should probably pay more attention to who he wants me to speak to before he takes it away. So now I'm in the zone of choosing my purpose over my potential because I believe that I have the potential to be everybody, anybody has the potential to be like a really big YouTuber. You know, it's like I had the potential because I had what I feel like are great quality videos, a great personality, a great look. Um, But, you know, it was just a matter of timing. I just thought it was always a matter of timing. I just need the right video to pop off and spiral into what will be like this new huge career. And granted, I've talked about this before, I don't want to be like a full time YouTuber ever, because I hate like, how consumed I can get into social media at times, like I will put my worth 
into numbers. It's really hard to work on something that you care about a lot and for it to be quantized by numbers. Is that the word I'm looking for? Quantified by numbers and not hold those values up to your worth. So if I loved this video and I spent hours editing it and I just love it, love it, love it so much, but it got 1000 views, baby, I don't care how much you love it. <laughs> like that doesn't pay the bills. Not that I use my YouTube check to pay the bills, but it it's very hard to continue to post things, even if you really like them, if they don't perform well, especially if you can post something else that will perform well. So doing kind of just a an, um, an audit on my channel, what I realized was I like to create the content that I like to watch. I love lifestyle vloggers. Like I watch everybody who you watch, I probably watch too. Like I love them. I love, I just, that's what I like to watch. And when I was again in high school in the beginning of college, I like to watch beauty gurus. That's why that was the content that I wanted to create. I mean, I get so frustrated now when people ask me to do makeup tutorials because I'm like, that makes absolutely no sense. Like nobody is watching me do my makeup. And it took me a really long time literally until this break to realize just because I'm good at something and it's maybe a part of like my brand bucket I guess you could say like things that you think of when you think of Breelin I hope that you think that she has a slate face period because that's never gonna stop but that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to show you how I do my makeup especially not on camera because you won't come to me always for what's new in makeup and as a um, as a makeup guru it's not they don't actually coincide I can be good at makeup and be known for makeup without creating content about makeup and the same goes for fashion which is a very hard hit for me and because I love fashion and like in an alternate universe like I would be Rihanna where I would have my own like fashion brand with a huge like that would be a dream and I would love for people to know me for being fashionable but even just as an example like when recently I'm like we can stop the hauls we can stop the uh, styling videos even on like reels and tiktoks and things or like fashion posts on instagram like there are plenty of fashionable people in the world nobody's checking for you that's not where your reach is that's not where god is like calling you to inspire and impact other people but that doesn't negate the fact that you are a stylish person and i think that when people think of me i think that they think that i can dress that i have you know nice clothes that i can style well and even I have been receiving a lot of confirmation now post this again crisis. I'm kind of going way out of order here, but just for example, I came up with the cutest outfit for my 25th birthday. If you guys haven't seen it on Instagram, um, I went to Paris for my birthday. I also went to Morocco. Um, I went to Paris and Marrakesh um, with Jasmine. This trip was so last minute. So when I decided to go the weekend before, I literally like booked the stuff for it. So I also went to Zara that day to go shopping. And I literally was just like looking like, what can I possibly buy? I don't have a birthday dress. I don't, I'm, I know I'm gonna go to Paris. Like I have to dress like I'm in Paris so I wasn't trying to stress myself out but you know just kind of having fun with actually like shopping for an event because I shop a lot but I don't go anywhere <laughs> and people don't really see my outfits anymore but I'm like this is a time where I on my birthday want to be dressed how I want to be seen and that's a different kind of fashion and a different kind of style than like styling for Instagram or styling for a haul or you know picking clothes that you know people are going to see like what would you wear if nobody saw you but like nobody saw you on the internet but people saw you in the real world what would make you feel comfortable where if somebody saw you on the side of the street they'd be like wow that that style is so unique to her and I've known what my style is for so long but I think that like kind of getting wrapped up in low-key being an insta baddie has kind of like removed my own personal style and made it the style of what everybody else was wearing and what everybody else was doing and even the brands that other people were wearing and so I during this time kind of realized like this is how I like to dress this is like the look that I like to to go for or whatever and I was so happy with what I put together for my birthday um outfit just because it was so like it was fun it was like 90s and preppy and like it was colorful of course it was pink but it was like it was playful and but I also thought that it was chic and I thought that it was I don't know I really liked it I have buckets for my own personal style 
that I'm working on like stepping into again regardless of like what's popular um but just like what's true to me and I think that in addition to me just posting like, hey, it's my birthday and I'm in Paris, I received a lot of messages and comments like the outfit, you know what I'm saying? The fit. And I was like, yes, because I don't have to post an outfit picture for people to know that I am into fashion and I'm a fashionable person and that I have style. But I think that I kind of got stuck with being like, if this is what I like and this is who I am and this is a part of who I am, this is my brand bucket, then I should create this kind of content. And this is the kind of content that I like to receive. Like I like to watch hauls to know what's new and out there. And I like to watch makeup videos to know what, what's new and out there. But that doesn't mean that that's what I have to create. And I think that became very specific when it came to lifestyle stuff because lifestyle is very popular nowadays, especially like with the black women and luxury stuff. And it's like, my life is not, luxury at this moment in time I think that I have a lot of things that can be luxurious in regards to the way that I treat myself I take care of myself and all those things um and you know luxury and is a relative I think of luxury being self-care but I know that nowadays luxury is very much like Gucci bag and Chanel and blah 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 um but I had to personally choose again after doing an audit of my social media and my life that I'm going to choose purpose over potential because at the end of the day like I have potential to do so many different things on media and specifically on social media but chasing a calling that is not designed or not designated for me won't have God's blessing on it and therefore it won't be successful so I said okay clearly this is why I have received some success like I feel like God is kind of like hey you're in the right direction but you're not going the right way (laughs) like mm, get over here and so yeah like I said even though I've experienced relative success on YouTube I don't feel like I've peaked at all or even like filled my or reached my full potential and like I said, it's easy to see the content that other people post that I like and I enjoy consuming myself and wanting to create that content for myself. But in reality, hair, makeup, lifestyle, the influencing lifestyle is not where I fit in. And this is why it's okay. One, I haven't been successful doing it. Like it's one thing if I was like, oh, but every time I post a vlog, I get a million views. God, why would you want me to stop? Like, no, baby, (laughs) like you're doing okay. But like, it could, it could clearly be better. Like, that's why you're very stagnant. You're not successful at it. Two, I am more motivated by impacting and changing lives. When you ask me, like, why I continue to do YouTube and why I do it in addition to everything else that I do, it really comes down to when I was a sophomore and my YouTube really started picking up. And people would reach out to me and even still now to this day, like the comments that I received from the first podcast episode, that stuff is like, whoa, it's moving. It's it shatters my soul. It kind of just makes me be like, this is purpose. This is why I'm here. This is how I'm making a difference. And whether it be a million views or a thousand I can receive a thousand views and impact lives and feel completely fine than when I'm trying to do something or be something, even if I genuinely enjoy it, even if I genuinely like this is genuinely what I would wear. This is genuinely how I wear my makeup. Like I can enjoy that content, but like I'm not satisfied unless that type of content has views, you know, unless it takes off, unless it does numbers. But if I reach one person, but I know that I'm impacting their life, it really it's okay for me. It's more than okay. It's very satisfying. It's fulfilling, shall I say. (laughs) It's fulfilling for me. And also, number three, that content, the lifestyle stuff, it doesn't align with my current lifestyle. So it's like, why am I fighting trying to go against what just isn't currently what's going on? That's not to say that I will never go back to lifestyle content. But here and now, Especially like when I was entering MCAT season, it was like, this isn't realistic. I'm fighting to get attention and ill, like ill. I don't really, I don't, not to say I don't care what y'all think, but 
I don't care what y'all think about me. I just want to create stuff that I enjoy watching and that I find that it's fun and I want people to also enjoy it and watch it and I just want success from it. And again, I think that it's really hard to not do content like that and not feel like success is value the numbers, but it, it is, but it can be seen differently when I create different content because I immediately find the value not in the number of people that watch the video, but the number of lives that I impact, the number of lives that are changed, number of people who receive community or hope or things like that from watching my content. And lastly, creating content like that, I don't believe is a good usage of my social media platforms for what I originally created them to be. I've talked about this before. I've had this goal since I first started YouTube where I'm like a lot of the reason why I do a lot of stuff that I do between pageantry to YouTube and other things to help build credibility and notoriety and my ultimate career goal, which is to be a media health expert. So yes, I'm going to be a doctor. But in addition to that, which we've talked about before, but I think that sometimes y'all forget, sometimes I forget that I want to be on somebody's television while also, again, impacting lives and using the knowledge that I have as a black woman caring for a black woman to not just care about the person who's in front of me in my exam room, but hopefully black women across the world or at least all over the country or at least, you know, in whatever district my little television network goes out to like that's the goal is to reach as many people as possible with my knowledge and my empathy and my care and my skill and I think that my skills are communication entertainment but also medicine and so this is how I'm trying to combine everything and I think that like lifestyle vlogs like does that even really make sense like Mm, maybe when I'm in medical school or maybe when I was you know going towards my degree to show people on the way but showing me going to a friend's birthday party doesn't build credibility or notoriety for me to be a media health expert in the future and what I find to be really difficult is like the people who are currently in these spaces they didn't have social media when they were my age or in my position and granted my position is unique to me as it always will be but it's really difficult to be like, what would they do when they were in, when they were in my shoes? Would they create a YouTube channel and create like fake media posts? Not fake, but like, you know, wannabe or lesser level. Like would they create kind of like an audition reel on their own to where they could actually take that and say, look, this is the work that I do. I have an audience of people who like what I do, who like how I talk, who like what I look like, who care about what I'm talking about. If you put me on your TV, I can guarantee you 50,000 people who will care about what I'm talking about. That would be great leverage, but they didn't have that. You know, the people who are on TV now, they didn't have that. So they didn't think about that. But if they were in my shoes, what would they do? Would they be on Instagram posting like bikini pictures? I mean, maybe if it was like from their vacation or their birthday, but like, every other picture like I have to think about posting for a purpose and this is not for everybody let's get this very upfront and out the way what I'm doing is right for me and my future and what I need it because I found myself to be over consumed with social media just because I wanted to use it for my benefit because listen social media is an interesting place. You can gain a lot from it. You can learn a lot from it, but you can lose a lot from it as well. You can lose your confidence. You can lose your self-worth. You can lose your time. And if you're not smart about social media, social media will use you. So I decided, okay, I'm getting used. I'm getting spanked by social media. It's time for me to use social media in a way that will benefit me. And if it's not benefiting me, I don't need to be using it. Twitter does not benefit me. So I don't use it anymore. But there are other things that would benefit me because if I'm trying to reach more people, something like TikTok, something that is fun and helps people grow an audience faster is more in line with what I want to use social media for. So you can see kind of just like how just me taking my time and literally just being in the word and meditating and just doing the work on the inside. I was so cut off. And I think that's another thing that's really important is that I've been doing YouTube and social media for about six years 
nonstop. I've rebranded many times in between, but I took no more than two weeks in between. Like, I mean, of course, okay, you know, when we first started off, we weren't that consistent, but I wasn't thinking about social media like that. Like I was posting, I knew what I wanted to post, but like, whatever. The Once I got consistent, I never stopped. I went posting all the time, nonstop. I never took a moment to be like, is this in line with where I want to go? Or have I found myself kind of off track? And if so, what do I need to do to get myself on track? I did that for six years, nonstop. Even if I came up with something new, I just added it to the pile. If I took something away, I took it away. And then it came back later. Like, do y'all remember when I stopped vlogging my sophomore year? Or was it my junior year? I think it was my junior year of, was it my, no, it was my junior year. Y'all, I know I have the worst memory. My junior year of college, I stopped vlogging. I was like, I'm not going to do college vlogs anymore. And I just did like content videos and my makeup videos went up. They really did. But I I had a moment, a split second where I sat down and I thought about it, but like not long enough. And that's exactly what this time was. Because I was at the point, y'all, where I was like, content creation is actually stupid. I was like, why am I setting up a camera? putting on an outfit, going to a random place, like having people look at me thinking that I'm so conceited to take a picture of an outfit just so that people can know that I have style. What is the purpose of that? What is the purpose of that? Like, that's why I'm like, y'all will not see me doing picture ventures. I won't ever say like never, ever again. But like my mindset just has shifted. It's just changed. I no longer find joy in the things that I previously did. I find things to be more uncomfortable and I don't want to do things that I used to really like. And there were other things too that kind of just made things really difficult for me to get into the current form of content creation that I was doing. And I didn't get to talk about this a lot, but like number one, my job would not allow me to film at work. Like that's a whole other situation and I'm still employed. So we'll have to talk about it later. But I, and y'all know, I spend a lot of time. I spent, I work from basically seven to seven, seven thirty to six thirty, on a good day. Like that's a, that's my whole day. It's very hard to create any type of content outside of that. When you're doing lifestyle, when this is my life, <laughs> work is life. And you told me that I can't vlog this. And it was really upsetting because I realized a medical assistant was a whole nother like level. Like I think that I had my college, you know, going into college level. And then I have my, I'm a college student level. And now I have, I'm a, I'm a graduate, I'm a senior level. Then I have my, I'm a master student, you know, graduate student level. And now here I am post-grad and I was kind of just like, crap, I, what about this lifestyle is pertinent for people to want to watch and, <laughs> honestly for me to want to share and then medical assistant was a, another benefit and I said like, oh great people like this who knew that so many people wanted to be a medical assistant I'm like great I can share this part of my life with you guys and share how this is for me especially as a non-traditional pre-med student on my way to medical school but like my job shut that down and I'm like what kind of content can I create as a future media health expert when I can't film at work I'm not a doctor and I'm no longer in school for college vlogs. So now I'm like, okay, I have to navigate where I feel like I fit in and the type of content that I feel like uploading, that I feel comfortable uploading, and that I feel inspired to upload. And again, trying to make this difference between views doesn't equal happiness, but like we all have a standard for our success. So like one day when I was, you know, going through all of this, I just try to sit down and think about like, again, what does success mean for me when it comes to social media? And if my goal is impact and I feel fulfilled when I'm inspiring, educating and entertaining, then that is the type of content that I need to create where no matter what, like I said, no matter what the views are, I will be happy if I am inspiring and impacting other people. And it's sad because I, I tried, I tested out my waters. I did like a women's health video and like it gets low views, but I want to make videos that are authentic to me and that relate to me and work towards the goals that I have for myself in the future. I, it was really hard to make this shift when all I was doing was watching lifestyle videos. And I, I it's really hard because there are not a lot of people like me in the world, but especially on social media. And specifically on YouTube, like I don't see anybody creating the content that I want to create in this 
in-between stage that I'm in. There's people who are creating content already where I want to be, but they're already grown and doctors and it's like, well, <laughs> what do I do at this at this point now? I'm not going to be in this space forever. I'm not going to always be this non-traditional pre-med student. One day I will be a medical student. One day I will be a resident. One day I will be a doctor. One day I will be an attending and I will be, you know, an actual media health correspondent. And I mean, it was really hard to kind of transition my mind to being like, you're stuck at where you are because you're not where you want to be to you're just currently where you are now, but one day you will be where you want to be. And that's really the whole premise of this podcast, a work in progress, where I was like, I, I don't want to continue to focus on the future without any appreciation for the present um, and the past, because, you know, without going through what I'm going through, I'm not going to become who I want to become. And again, ultimately, I'm becoming Dr. Breland, but what does that mean, mind, body, soul? Like, I got to get my mind together. I got to get my soul together. I got to get my spirit together. Like, that means so many different things on so many different aspects. And I can't just focus on that actually means me being in medical school and becoming a doctor. That means me dealing with some trauma. That means me working through some things. That means me dressing the way I want to be dressed and attending things that I want to attend and watching things I want to watch and consuming things that I want to consume. And so again, this is just my personal and professional development diary, because as I'm growing into this person that I want to be, um, the goal is, is to be happy and not be happy when I get there, but to be happy along the way, because a positive perspective and dedication to embracing the journey more than the destination is paramount to achieving fulfillment. And that's genuinely what I just want in life. I just, you know, I just want to be happy. <laughs> One time when I was journaling, I wrote down these truths that I was failing to practice and live by experience because I was engulfed in the world of social media. So the truths were that I don't have to be a public figure for people to care about me. And I remember literally during my first week back on social media, you guys made that very clear to me. I am not a huge 1 million follower influencer, but I received what felt like a million messages from people who cared that I was gone off of social media for six weeks, measly months. Like, what is that? You know, so that that means a lot. Here's another truth. My worth is not determined by the vanity metrics of social media. I am I, I hold a lot of value to a lot of different people because of what I can provide to them. And it may not be a million people, but if I am impacting five people to change the lives of themselves by going to college, which will end up changing their families' lives and their generational wealth, you know, things like that, like that's impactful. And so these vanity metrics of social media don't necessarily represent that. And also something else that is true is that eventful moments are still important without having to be announced and displayed on social media. <sighs> I know that one's that one's tough. That's a tough one to swallow, especially as somebody who eat, breathe, sleep social media. It's kind of just like, what do you mean? Are you calling us like, no, 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 no. But like, if we really take a moment, it's okay. Like, it's okay if it's not on social media. It's okay if people don't know where you were at last night. It's okay if they didn't know what you wore, even though it was a bomb outfit. It's okay if they don't know what you ate. It's okay. Like, it's okay to post it if you want to. It's okay. But, like, things are still important. Things are still announcements. Things are still life-changing, even if you don't post it. So, I think that, like, living, like, coming to grips and fully understanding those truths while being away from social media was a big part in how I was able to kind of like reconstruct my mind, reconfigure my thinking about social media before returning back to it. It was so funny because I went through so many different phases. Like there was this one point where I was like coming up with irrational excuses for what other people thought like about me not being on social media. Like I was like, of course, people are going to think about the MCAT. But I was like, what if they start think that I got COVID? What if they think that I died? <laughs> like, who cares? Like, who cares? Who cares? Obviously, thank God I did not have COVID. Um, and I was quite okay. You know, I was mentally going through some things, but I was okay. Um, but that just shows you how 
I think that I definitely got wrapped up into it where I allowed social media to determine my worth. Um, Mainly the vanity metrics, you know, as like my purpose, like if these numbers aren't high, then the content has no purpose. But that is not the case. It's just not true. Instead, now I'm more focused on using social media as a vessel for my purpose. And I know what it is. And I know why God is using me. It's just a matter of me listening to him and actually creating the content that he has destined me to create. I think that this reminds me of one of my favorite verses that we hear, we hear so often. And that's why, yo, the Bible is so good because how dare it just shape shift form to whatever we got going on in our lives. Like Matthew 16, 25, if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? How many times have we heard that? We've heard that so many times. But for some reason, when I say that quote or that Bible verse now, it hits different. It's like, dang, if I know what God wants me to do, if I feel or just have an inkling and I decide to go against it for what? For social media, for a couple taps, for a couple views, for a couple likes, for a couple more dollars in my bank account. Like what does a man gain? It's not worth it. It's like, it's not worth it for me. Like, who is Breland off of social media? What are things that make me happy, that make me passionate, that make me, that make me care? And it, it all comes down to three things, right? Breland balled up is purpose passion and people I'm all about purpose like I cannot relate to people when they don't have that's a bit extreme but I am so inspired and enamored by stories about people who are who have purpose who know what they're doing here why they're here and working towards it and if you don't know your purpose you got to stay away from me or you got to figure it out because I am very purpose driven and I'm very passionate, as you guys can tell, like it doesn't matter if it's social media it's about what I'm eating for dinner or if it's about my life's plan or God's plan for my life. Like I'm very passionate about everything that I do. I have passion behind everything. And I think that it just speaks to the intensity and the intention behind the way that I move with everything that I do. And then people, I genuinely care about people, your story, your the way that I'm impacting you, how this impacts your life and your family's life and your family family and your children and your children's children and, you know, what makes you who you are and how you and me together has changed both of our lives for the better or for the worst forever. And like, I just, I'm really big on passion, purpose and people because without purpose, I lose my passion And that's what happened with me and social media. It was like I was creating, creating, creating with no purpose. And so I lost my passion. I was kind of just like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? What is the purpose? So yeah, just to wrap it up, right? I no longer felt like posting had a purpose to it. And overall, I felt like I was leaning towards the vanity metrics and the compensation. Let's not forget that because that was a big part of it too, okay? I was making a good chunk on social media. Um, but without regard to the impact that my socials were having on myself and other people, as well as the potential that my socials could have, because I I don't want to make it seem like social media is a big, bad thing, but it is, if you're kind of just like a hamster wheel, just on it, not knowing why you're there. Like I said, if you don't use social media, social media will use you. It's okay to have social media. It's okay to post often. And it's okay to like care if your posts don't do well, but you just have to determine and to decide why you care and what that looks like. And again, that's what my time off during my social media sabbatical was spent. I decided like I care because I want high social capital for easy integration into the media field in the future. Very simply put, I want to be in media one day. 
I do want to do medicine, but I want to combine media and medicine. And I don't know if a lot of people realize it or if they care, but social capital has always been a thing. But nowadays, it's just easier to quantify through your social media metrics. And so I don't want to reach a million followers. So that way I can be like, oh, I'm that girl is so that I can live out my passion and my purpose, which is to reach as many people as possible in the ways that I believe that I'm supposed to in regards to me being a talk show host or a physician media health correspondent. So that is why I care. Again, I care because I want credibility behind my subject and my field of expertise, because I believe that that's going to actually change lives. If there are more eyes, if there are more ears on the pandemic that we have going on within our Black women community ourselves in regards to maternal and fetal mortality rates, then maybe things will actually start changing, especially if a Black woman who has credibility and notoriety is speaking up about it. In the future, when I want to be an author or a keynote speaker or a mentor, these things are going to have more weight to them if I have social capital, which is determined on social media. I want to be a reproductive justice advocate. And I know that having a following will benefit me in that way. I want to provide improved health care through communication, like a myth buster. And it helps the more people that you have actually listening to what you're trying to communicate through lifestyle and holistic medical perspectives and news and updates and how it affects us as black women and what's for us by us and good for us as black women from a physician perspective. These are all things that I want to be able to provide to my audience and no audience. (laughs) What are you providing? I also want to build a community of like-minded people to decrease the feeling of being alone. And that's something that I feel like I am currently working on now, which I can do with the amount of followers that I have now. Because now that I'm more clear on my purpose on social media, I began to be passionate about and excited about the reach that I have with my audience and um, the impact again that I can make in this new way. And what's what really helped I talked about him in my other podcast and we're not going to talk about okay my pastor on every part well maybe we will maybe we will I'm just kidding but um he talks a lot about like godly influence and like I said I was so at this point like in October I was so like I'm not an influencer like I because what's so weird is that I would say that I got grandfathered into influencing like I wanted to be a YouTuber because I was aware that YouTubing was a thing because I started off right before it got way too saturated and I ended up growing a following into it. Then like those same people trickled over into my Instagram and now you want to see how I'm living my life and what is that but an influencer. But I think that the word influencer has kind of like spiraled into this thing that's, I hate it, like so influencer. And like now when I think of influencer, I think of Instagram baddie, I think of BBL, I think of free codes, I think of drama. You know, I don't think of actual people who are positively influencing people's lives. And that was on me because I was surrounding myself with people who weren't being positive influencers or they were just being like, you know, they were influencers for a job. But when I started realizing or when the idea was presented to me that I could be a godly influencer, things changed because I'm like, wait a minute. Now that sounds more like me. That makes more sense. Here I am where I can recognize that nothing should rival our pursuit for God's purpose in our lives. Um, And that when we establish our priorities of having God first and everything else second, then things become easier. It's easier to cast down things that we want that creep up on us like attention and likes and things like that. um, Because social media can in a way like become an idol. And I don't want that. I don't play. I don't play with the idols. If I ever feel like anything comes close to being above God in my life, cut it. It's got to go. Like, I don't care how much you like it. And social media has that potential to do so. So because it demands our attention, our affection and our resources, just like God does. So you have to decide who's going to be numero uno, who's going to be head honcho. Like I said, I was so blessed to receive the influence that I did because 
yes, I feel like my content was good. You know what? My, my uh, move in vlog, that was some good stuff. I need to go back and watch it now and see if it was actually a good video. I feel like it was pretty okay. You know, it, it, it did what it needed to do <laughs> during the time. And, but at the end of the day, like I said, it was only God. It was, it was all God who was like, yeah, we're going to let this hit. So that way she can get a couple followers. So that way she can do what I want her to do. But again, godly influence recognizes that the adoration that came naturally without me trying super hard or like having to put out a hundred videos before, you know, getting a thousand followers, like it all came so easy in the beginning. All of that was because I was walking in my God given purpose. And the moment that I stepped out of that and I started doing whatever I wanted to do, he took his hand off of it. And the last thing that I want in life ever is for God to take his hand off of anything that I'm doing. Like if God is not there, I don't want it. I've learned that the very, very, very hard way. And like I said, it was a moment where I realized like, crap, I've been doing this whole thing without him. When it comes to my media, I have been walking confused as to why isn't it working and why am I not happy blah, blah, blah. it's because you're not doing it with Christ in the center he needs to be first and foremost and if he's not it's just not gonna work for you so I, again I figured this out by being alone and being in solitude and being like what exactly is the purpose of all of this and you know I was talking to my mom about this one day um and she's kind of just like you just need to go back to the basics like beauty and brains the platform, it really stuck. It really, it stuck with people. It, it helped people. And you don't necessarily have to create this whole new thing. Like y'all, I was thinking about, I was like, what do I like to do? And, um, I was going to change my channel to be me talking about television shows. Why did my makeup, like getting ready to go out and it's going to be like a getting ready with me, a getting ready with me series where I would do my makeup while watching shows. Like, and like reacting to shows because I love watching television. I love television so much. You guys know this. I talk about it all the time. And I was like, I can get so passionate about television. <laughs> so I will just watch TV while I'm doing my makeup because I love getting ready. Like I love getting ready. I don't necessarily like going out, but I love getting ready to go out. So I was like, wouldn't that be a really cool like idea? Um, yeah, glad that didn't make the cut. <laughs> Maybe we'll make that something on my Instagram or something. But um, yeah, she was like, continue to produce the content that you started with you've gotten way off course with posting about the pageants and the fashion and the hair and stuff but she was like the comments that you would get from people when they would say that you were so helpful to them was when you were giving them advice for college because they didn't have it because they were first generation college students because they were new to college life in general and she was like that's when you were really walking in your purpose like that's when you were really in your bag and I saw it and I saw you get out of it and I thought that you would get back sooner, but you didn't. So here's me telling you, get back in your bag. And I literally was like, wow, that's crazy. Because I was praying for months for something new. I was like, God, just tell me what's new. What's next? Where am I supposed to go next from here? Because clearly what I'm doing isn't working and it's not working because your hand is not on it. I want whatever I do new to be with you at the center. Where are we going? And it just clicked to me where it was like, we're going back to the basics. We're going back to the beginning, to what Beauty and Brains was. It's a platform, but now it's different because you're not just a person who is in college. You've graduated from the number one HBCU. You have gone to graduate school. You've gone to an HBCU. You've gone to a PWI. You've gotten your bachelor's in a hard science and you've gotten your master's of physiology. You are a non-traditional student. You understand what somebody, what you five years ago needed. Now be that person for them. You want to call yourself beauty and brains? Like everybody doesn't have the opportunity to just go in being confident and figuring it out. And we all know I made a lot of mistakes on the way. I have so much, again, life experience that I'm like, people could actually learn from the mistakes that I've made. Let me actually walk in my purpose and use the experiences that God has granted in my life for the better or for the worse to help other people. That's purpose. That's impactful. Makeup tutorials, hauls, a day in my life videos. They're not. 
And so that's how we got here. That's how the podcast was created because again, you guys are gonna see more in the future how my content style video on my channel is going to kind of shift into being specific content video. And for some of you all, I understand that it may seem like it's not for you. And it's because it kind of isn't. If you are already through college or maybe if you are, I'm hoping again for this to be advice videos for people who are coming into college, maybe still in high school, in college, or maybe post-grad in a graduate program. And I will also still be creating content in my road to medical school and road to medicine video as that comes along. So will this podcast be forever? No. Will me not vlogging be forever? No. But what you can expect is if you're somebody who loves this channel because you love me, Breland, and you're invested in my journey, my process, this podcast is perfect for you because I hope that it will allow you to learn more about me, hear updates about me and what's going on in my mind and in my life um, in a long form content like you're used to vlog wise, but just in a different in a just, just just in a different way. Um, and if you're somebody who would come to me for advice or, f you know, to learn different things for resources, I can provide that to you in a way that I feel like would be a better representation of the type of content that I feel like would help me and my future. And everybody's not gonna like it. I get it. It's not gonna make sense for everybody. But that is what I believe that I was told to do at this time. And you're not gonna find me being disobedient to my father okay I ain't blocking my blessings because of you so I definitely have you know seen some comments about like oh this is the content that we missed and we miss it I get it. it's gonna be different it's not gonna be for it's not gonna be for everybody um y'all gonna miss some of the stuff but I'm making space and time for the type of content that I feel like has purpose and that I'm passionate about and I will continue vlogging when I go to medical school. I will do medical school vlogs um, because I feel like that will have purpose behind it. Like seeing how I navigate that will have purpose. But, you know, maybe I'll vlog going to interviews or things like that. But and I think, again, I mentioned this. If I did mention this in the last episode, I, it kind of clicked to me when I do stuff where if I do just end up vlogging, because it's very natural for me to pick up a camera. That's why before I even started vlogging, vlogging like in college, I had vlogs as a high schooler just because like I always am kind of just like, let me pick up the camera and show this. If I ever have vlog footage and I feel like I want you guys to see it, I'll just include it in a podcast like at the end. Um, and that's how we're going to do that for the next couple of years, because this is this is an in-between space. But, you know, I am a work in progress and I have to be happy with where I'm at. And I can touch a lot of people's lives based off of the experience that I have had. I, I have this unique time where I can sit and think about what I've been through and how that's made me the person who I am today and how that can help other people and build community again to help people not feel alone. That's something that I can do here and now. And there's many things I want to do with my platform that I have to wait until I receive a degree or, you know, receive some type of notoriety or credibility. But for here and now, I can still be Beauty and Brains and I can be Breland, a work in progress on this podcast. So that's what it means to become Dr. Breland. Um, and that's what it looks like as well. So when I say that this is a personal professional development diary, you guys are getting um, the focused part of me strengthening, again, like I said, my mind, my body and my soul on my way of ultimately becoming who I ultimately see myself as. And as we work on ourselves and grow and develop, let it be because we wanna honor our gifts our identity and our assignments, not because we crave acceptance or approval. And just to answer a question that I feel like I'm gonna get a lot is you guys are gonna be like, okay, Breland, so you took this break, you came to understand like what you wanna do with social media and now you're back on social media and you back heavy, sis, like how, do, how can you ensure that that never happens again? One, who's to say that it won't? I can definitely have a moment where I feel like I've lost my way and I'm hoping that that won't happen because I will be taking social media sabbaticals often. You know, mirroring after one of my favorite pastors, Pastor Michael Todd, this man been gone for some minutes. And I didn't realize that he took this long of a sabbatical because like when he's on, he's my favorite to watch. Like he, he, y'all know the word speaks through that man. I love him so much, but he takes 
it must be like four to five months every year to disconnect. Some parts of it, he's off of social media, not all the time, but like he will not preach where he sits and he listens to the word and he listens to God. And I think that was a really important time for me to actually have time of solitude and silence. Um, but intentional solitude and silence where I was listening to God. Again, I was praying and I was fasting and I was surrounding myself in his word and not what other people were saying and they were doing. And I felt so refreshed. And I think that it's made a big difference on how I've come back to social media, because even though I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, maybe I'll do it twice a year because I'm kind of ready to be off of it right now, which is why y'all might notice like, okay, is this podcast going to be weekly or listen, (laughs) I'm a work in progress. I'm not just going to use that as an excuse for everything. But honestly speaking, I mean, I was so excited to come back to social media once I knew, okay, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to rebrand. It's going to be Breland Hunt because this is like the genuine me and blah, 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 blah. But like, I didn't really take into account how burnt out I was going to be from the MCAT. And then trying to do my application at the same time, returning back to work, like I am burnt out and am upset because I've been waiting to jump back into social media for so long, but, and it's so important to me, but it can't be like the main priority. I just have to have my priority straight basically. And medical school is kicking my butt and I ain't even in yet. (laughs) So, um, I, I'm not as consistent as I want to be, but from here on out, I'm going to say it. That way I can stick to it. New podcast episodes will be out every Thursday and new content videos will be out every Tuesday. So I will be uploading on Tuesdays and Thursdays on YouTube. And if you're just listening to the pod, um, new episodes should come out every Thursday. And we're going to keep it to live at five, except for the podcast. If you want to listen, I'm just going to like have that be released maybe like 6 a.m. or something like that. Um, In case you want to listen to it on your way to work. How long have I been talking for? Oh my gosh. (laughs) This video is already... (laughs) No, every video is not gonna be this long I really thought this was gonna be a short one but anyway yeah that's basically the end of it um I will be doing a social media sabbatical again probably maybe in September I don't know whenever I feel like it's right um I'm gonna go for a couple of weeks try and get a a good gist of things and maybe I'll do a social media sabbatical on like Instagram but like and I won't watch YouTube but I may still post we'll see how it goes but I definitely suggest it and I think that you should do one too if you are kind of feeling lost like what am I doing why am I creating what am I creating who am I creating for and if God is not in the center of it if he's not your ringleader if he's not your you know head honcho then take another look and you know reconsider so pray about it first and foremost pray about it Pray about when to do it, set out amount of time, um, fast while you're doing it in order to hear the Lord in a more succinct way. And afterwards, if you feel like the sabbatical was valuable, commit to limiting your return to social media. Like I'm on social media now, but I'm not on it the way that I was before at all. And I love it so much. And it's because I kind of like broke the habit. Like, you know how they say you need, what is it, 21 or 27 days to break a habit? Six, I was gone for about five months, like four and a half months. Like that broke the habit. I don't have the notifications on my phone anymore. So I don't get notified. And it, it it's messed up a couple of things. Like I don't be responding to people or somebody's trying to reach out through me through DM. But in my mind, I'm like, if you're that important, you should have my number. <laughs> no shade. But um, yeah, so I don't even think about like when I'm bored, I don't think to grab my phone to check it to scroll anymore. I literally am only on it if I choose. I feel like scrolling on social media right now where I feel like checking something or I feel like posting something. Um, now TikTok, that's a different, that's a different thing because I did get on TikTok while I was on my break because I was like, this is something that I don't feel crappy about. I don't feel crappy after leaving TikTok and I feel really inspired and I feel really happy. Um, but that's another thing. You just have to find out what works best for you. But I think that, I mean, one thing that I want to get across in this video is to not be so carried away of dreaming of who you want to be that you forget to love who you are now. That is really the premise of a work in progress. And also this quote that I've been seeing going around on Instagram that always speaks to me in whatever stage that I'm at in life and even right now. 
I love how you pray for something. It seemingly goes unanswered. And then one day you're at the center of the very thing that once felt impossible. The waiting room isn't punishment. God was positioning you to receive the fullness of your request. Stay in position. I believe that I'm in the waiting room currently, um, but just again, remembering that this isn't punishment. There is purpose for this position. So I'm just staying a position, doing what he wants me to do, staying off of social media if it doesn't pour into me, because at the end of the day, you won't be distracted by comparison if you're captivated with purpose. On that note, um, let's get into some kingdom keys, because I do believe that God speak to us in various different ways. If God has not spoke to you directly about your calling, don't passively wait for him. Your gifts, your personalities, your talents, your strengths and passions are always indicators of what he has called you to do. The danger of heeding your call too late in life is you limit the length of your relevance to the people, environment, or the generation that God has sent you to. There is a cost to starting late in life. Heed your call to live the life that God has intended for you. Most of the time, in my experience, God doesn't call me to do something new. He calls me to do something that I'm already doing with a better attitude and a bigger purpose. And the temptation is to walk away from what you're doing and start something new. I think I need a new marriage, a new church, a new job. I can't do this anymore. I don't have the strength to keep going in in this relationship any longer, but God told Gideon, let's go. The strength that you have is enough for this moment. When God gives you an assignment, he makes it big enough for you to question it and small enough for you to take the first step. You have the strength that you need for the task that you've been given today. Are you going to pursue what I want for you as passionately as you pursue what you want for yourself? Because when I ignore this area, spiritually when i when i ignore this and just go after my dreams and just go after my relationships i am ignoring a very significant part of my purpose i'm ignoring actually the only part of my purpose that's going to have eternal implications what you do spiritually is the only thing that will matter eternally so there is a process to becoming you and that process is going to be challenging and that process is going gonna, is gonna to be on like what you would have expected. That's why the Lord tells us, my ways are not your ways. But you have to trust the God that you first encountered. That when I encountered you, I encountered someone who is for me and not against me. Someone who is with me and would never forsake me. And so when it seems like you have forsaken me, I'm not going to lean into the narrative of the enemy. I'm going to know that, God, you are still with me. And so I will keep my integrity. I will keep my commitment. I will keep walking with you, even when it feels hard. When I am confident in my calling, I don't need to compete with other people or compare myself to other people, but I do need to align myself with those who will confirm what is already placed inside of me. You were never intended to live out your calling alone. You do have to get the order right. It is not people first. Mary was aware. She was ready to hear God when God spoke to her, not another person. She accepted the calling that God placed on her life, not her mama. Then she acted quickly because she realized she was going to have a baby. She needed to get herself around someone who was a little bit farther down the road from her. If God called you, you're enough. And it's time for you to accept that. But that doesn't mean it won't be hard. And that doesn't mean you won't have to put in a lot of work. And that doesn't mean that sometimes you you won't like it. (laughs) Repetition over time creates strength. And you might be thinking, well, That's easy for you to say, you're Stephen Furtick's wife. How do I know what I'm called to do? 
I have an answer for you. You're called to do whatever God has placed in your life right now, this moment. Not one day when you get married or one day when you have more money or one day when you own your own home, then not have. But if it's not used in the intention of why it was created, the creator will literally look at this and not see it as functional. When God looks at us, the whole essence of well done, my good and faithful servant, you may have heard people say this, that when I die, I want to hear God say that to me, that when I die, I want God to look at me and say, it was good, that the way you lived your life, that I categorize that as good because I see that you did and you, you live in a way according to what I know is your truth. And what God knows to be your truth is your truth. It is your reality. It produces the most authentic version of you and that is why family you can't just believe any hype you can't just have this idea that you know I am whoever I choose to be whenever I choose to be it because you can be many things and not be functional to your truth but the the reality of life is that there is something that God knows about you and why you're able to trust him is because he is your creator he knows the truth of your identity. He knows the truth of your authenticity. And so Jesus is saying, without me, you can do nothing. And he says that and he means it. He doesn't, he's not saying that, hey, if you don't serve the Lord, many people don't serve the Lord and, and they're out there doing amazing things that are in our eyes, right? They're doing all kinds of things in life. But when Jesus looks at you, he wants to see you functioning in the authenticity of your creation that you were created with a purpose. You're not random. All the space in our life with sermons and worship music and audiobooks and podcasts. But if you don't have a plan, you just start scrolling. And you'll scroll feeds during every extra second that you have in your day. And if you spend your day scrolling, you're going to end it starving starving for encouragement because you were looking in the wrong place, starving for purpose because you were comparing your calling to someone else's calling, lacking the peace and the joy that are ours for the taking, but we wasted that precious pocket of time that could have been used for God's just whisper a word of encouragement. Fill that little empty space in your life. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe. You can do so on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcast. If you're not already watching the pod, don't forget there are accompanying video podcasts on my YouTube channel, Beauty and Brains. So join me over there and subscribe to that channel as well. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Freeland Hunt or visit my website, ReelandHunt.com for weekly podcast updates or to contact me to share your story. Until next time, be sure to live each day to the fullest because you only live once and give yourself some grace. We are all just a work in progress. I'll see you guys next time.